LEDs, LEDs, who's got the LEDs? I do, and I'm gonna put more in this car. So I'm gonna put uh, headlights and taillights in the car today. And I think um, LEDs have come, kind of come a long ways. They have aluminum heat sinks now. They don't have that, just that metal braid that they had on it for a heat sink. And they actually look pretty good nowadays. So I'm gonna be using, I think a 25 watt LED for the front and H13 conversion. And in the rear, I'm gonna put a 3157 type LED bulb in the rear, increase the illumination in the, in the rear, and have that, and you get that instant light that people can see. So it's all about safety today. Let's do it. The headlights before. It's hard to get a good, good picture of it. They are very yellow. All right, hey guys. We're gonna put these, <clears throat> this H13 bulb in there as a conversion capsule for the halogen bulb. Pretty simple, should be able to just unplug it, plug the new one in, shouldn't have a problem. One thing I'll talk a bit about, about these, this is kind of a newer style. It has an aluminum heat sink on it. Some of them have, I've seen some with a braid on it, have some kind of a weird braid on it that acts as a heat sink. I've also seen ones, I have one set on a vehicle of mine that's kind of an early set that has some little fans in it and those fans spin up and I don't really think that's a good idea because those little motors in there, once they do seize up, this whole thing starts to melt down. So I would probably stay away from those and go with, if you can afford the space, I know some of these are, have a rubber booth that goes around the whole thing so it doesn't really allow you to, uh, to, to put anything, you know, these are kind of a higher profile, I guess, than, than the other ones. So important thing is kind of buy what you need. Um, if you have space restrictions and you probably want to get that braid style so you can kind of fold it up in there and have a heat sink that's going to work for a long time. Let's unplug these and put the new ones in. So pull the tab, push, should come right out. And then uh, you can see this is the halogen capsule. Twist counterclockwise, and there it is. Take the LED capsule. These are keyed, so they're only going to go in one way. So there's one uh, tab that's longer than the rest of them. Twist, plug it in, and lock it. There you go. That's all there was to it. I did it. Now we're running on LEDs. The only thing is that I question is the orientation of that LED capsule. Let's check. Let's find out. So we'll put the old halogen bowl back in and we'll pull it out. That's where that halogen bulb sits. I don't know if you can see that or not, but these are the two individual filaments here. And consequently, this has two filaments. I hope you can see this. This has two filaments that kind of look the same. The way the reflector is designed to work in this thing, this bulb is designed to sit, the elements are designed to sit flat within the housing which this one does, it, it clearly does. This is the original halogen bulb that came out of it. And what happens is, is that the low beam is positioned just a little bit further out than the high beam. The high beam's just a little bit further in, so it'll focus that light within the reflector. So you definitely want both of these to be sitting the way it was with the LED as in the halogen. So we'll put the LED back in. Pull it out. Uh-oh. That's not the same. This one's flat. That one's turned. So, where we sent the wrong thing? Well, looks like to me there's a little adjustment screw on here. And you can pull this pin out and rotate this wherever you want it. This clearly is not like that. Let's loosen that up, rotate this thing, get this thing as flat and level as possible just like the halogen is, and get these elements in here positioned exactly like the halogen is within the housing. So 
So if it's in there like that, hold this, rotate it upright. And there's the hole. Okay, there it is. So now it should go in there flat. Rotated this about 60 degrees counterclockwise. All right, now we're gonna put this in. And there you go. You can see this thing fits just about as flat as it can be when we pull it out. Its orientation is like that. Just as the orientation is on the filaments of the halogen bowl. So reflectors are gonna work a little bit differently on every kind of vehicle. So you definitely wanna check this and your reference. There you have it. I'll do the other side, call it a day. Twist the bulb and pull the light out too. And you can see that one's kind of a little bit hazy and not too good either. No, if it's just like this, we have no use in taking the plug out. So, see how this got a little hot there. Okay, the bases are the same. Check for that. And that's kind of a projector thing going on there in the front. Okay, so we'll turn on the parking lights, make sure it works. tell by seeing that little video we have a little bit of a problem we have a fast flash issue so when you can see that when the individual turn signals are operated no, they work fine but when you put the parking lights on that one and only that one flashes fast not sure really why because everything's fed into the BCM the body control module body control module can actually send a code and set your check engine light for things like Oh, I've seen a really weird things like taillights and uh, horns and, and stuff like that that has really nothing to do with the engine, but that's a, just a general system light and it shows a little picture of an engine and you think your car is failing, but in reality you just have a burnout bulb. So usually what happens is, is if it doesn't see enough of a load, it'll flash faster. And I think that that's a, a kind of a throwback from the old days when they had the old, the old uh, uh, spring style, uh, coil style. Uh, flashers, you know, the ones back in the 70s that used to click really loud. So that what happened is with those, so they didn't receive enough of a load, then they would flash fast and, and um, tell you that you had a bulb out. So this is kind of simulating the same thing, but not really sure why it doesn't happen on this side and it does happen on that side. But nevertheless, you're going to fix both because eventually this is going to probably cause you a problem like turning your check engine light on. So let's pull this thing out and what we're going to use today we're going to use this. This is a, uh, I think it's about, what, six ohms. So what this is going to do is it's going to present a, a, a fake load, I guess, what it is. The advantage to having LEDs is, of course, having a low power consumption, the, um, the, the low heat, the longevity of life, and you get all that. But not if you put one of these on because all you're doing is you're just really loading down the system on and you're going to lose your power savings. But that's okay because as long as the BCM sees that, you know, the light's functional and then it's fine. Not a real problem. In fact, you can leave the bulb completely out. This six ohm load is going to act just as if you had an incandescent bulb in there loading the circuit. So let's stick this in. Don't use these. I'll tell you how to do that. A 
most of the time the wiring colors that goes into the uh, that goes throughout the electrical system is not very say standard especially with some of the import cards so i know from experience that a black uh, gm product is ground um, a brown is a parking light and a green is a right turn uh, i also know that a yellow is a left turn so when we get into the other side i'm using piercing probes here i'm going to back probe this from the from the rear so there's 12 volts there click 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 and then there's our fast flash so you can see here uh, if you want a maximum value so it looks like we need our load resistor on the ground and the green all right pull this light back out again it's kind of by feel you can feel it split right there We will be splicing this in parallel to the light. So it would need to go across these two in order to load the circuit down. You want the plus and the minus. So this is your turn signal right there. We'll hook it up there. Just kind of take it and wrap it around so that you have it goes in and then splay it out. That's your completed load. So that's a load in parallel. It should make the BCM happy. All right, let's see if our fast flash fix worked. Okay, that's right. That was pretty good. 